Hello, Russ Geff here. Welcome to uh, another expression advanced to tutorial. Today I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how user fun functions work in expression advanced to, and then I'm going to try to explain delegates as best as I can. I've got a lot of people asking me how delegates work, so that's the aim of this video start by loading my editor here and I'm just gonna get a generic server block hold on all right there we go do, 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 do. right so we're gonna start off by defining a basic function with no return type so it's void and we're just gonna void my function no parameters and it's simply going to print hello world and then of course we're going to call it and this is our basic function in expression advanced 2 so just its return type its name and then obviously what it does here so we do that and it prints hello world because we're calling the function here if I wanted to make it return something obviously I could put uh, a string here and simply do turn hello world and I could uh, print the uh, value return once again hello world and I can add parameters so int a and int b here the world and then we can just uh, a plus b to n17 so yeah that's how functions work I think we all understand the basic concept of user functions, okay? So let's go back to our original example. And here's where we're going to talk about functions as objects. So a function is a kind of object, okay? So if I wanted to, for example, move this function over to somewhere else, I could do function void again, uh, another function equals my function. And now what I've done is I've defined another function with return time, return type void here. And then I have basically assigned my function to it. So now if I do print my uh hang on no not my function another function here uh, no not print well me my head's not working right here we go hello world okay now when you define a function just like variables it is nested to the body of code that it is defined in so if I was to do if true here this should not be accessible because this was defined inside that if statement see there we go okay so functions are only accessible from where find I could obviously add a global modifier onto this oh wait apparently I can't huh? okay right let's uh, remove all that so now you see how functions can be passed around to other functions and move okay so this is where delegates come in so if I wanted to move my function into a table 
I wouldn't be able to do it. So let's let's create a, a table and then a table one function equals my function. You'll know that we can't do that. A function cannot be assigned into a table, right? However, a delegate can. So if I use my if I use a casting operator on my function to cast it into a delegate, a function is no longer a function. It is a delegate. Okay? A delegate is basically a function that is being treated like data rather than a function itself. Okay? So right now I have now put this function, which will print hello world, into this table. And I can put it back. So if I do um, function void um, from delegate equals now I want to cast that back to a function, right? And then I did from delegate here. So right now we've passed the table, a delegate version of my function, and then we've taken it back out of the table and put it into from delegate and called from delegate, okay? And you'll know, hello world has printed. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this. Uh, the most important one, of course, is callbacks. So let's try a simple timer, okay? Simple, in two seconds, I want you to run my function. So you cast my function into a delegate first and then pass it into time is simple. So uh, let's just call, just say this, it's in two seconds. Okay. Now when the timer activates, it will run this function. Okay, it will run the delegate. And it has been two seconds. Excellent. Right. Um, now, obviously this is a little bit messy because we've defined our function up here and then we've casted it down to a delegate and shoved it in there. You don't have to do that because there is an inline syntax for delegates. Okay, so if I do here function, right, no return type, just the word function and the body for it, I can pull a function as a delegate directly into this timer, okay? Print hello world, okay? Works exactly the same. And if I wanted to, I could move this out here and pull to a bar and delegate bar equals now, one thing about delegates is they can't be called, okay? And this is why you want to have, you know, your functions that you're going to call as functions and the delegates that you're going to call using uh, callbacks or whatever as delegates. Because the delegates can be passed around but not called and the functions can be called but not really passed around very well okay if I try to do var here uh, it can't be called okay unless we use the invoke method invoke var and now we are going to invoke the delegate which means it gets called okay uh, if 
for example, this was to return something. So let's do return um, a plus b, and let's give this an, uh, two integers, a and e, b, right? And now I know that this is going to return a number, so I'm going to use a uh, class pointer, which is this, okay? So this invoke knows that this function is going to try and return an integer, then the function itself, which is our, which is var one and two. I'm going to do print here, and this should work. Three, excellent. Now, when it comes down to class pointers, they only work inside an invoke. Okay, if you try to use them anywhere else, it won't work. They won't do anything. But they are specifically for invoking delegates. This is just so you don't have to go through the process of doing function int uh, my func equals function var my func one and then two. Okay. So to call that delegate I'd have to do both these lines. For the invoke, I only have to do it in one. It's as simple as that. And that really is delegates. That's everything you need to know about delegates and user functions in Expression Advanced 2. Thus concludes this video. Bye.